Huh? Okay, we are live. Don't contact us unless it's an emergency. Vina! Vina's like, I'm in the house. <laughs> What's that? Vina, troll slayer. <laughs> Vina, hey, troll slayer. I could be a rock star. <laughs> Kitty in the house. So I was reading somewhere where somebody no, was complaining about how like the first five minutes of a live stream when they watch it later, like the first five to ten minutes is like just recognition of everybody coming mm -hmm. in the room. What's your thoughts on that? I think it happens every day. Jetton! What, did people complain or that... No, that everybody's recognizing everybody that's coming into their room. Yeah, so... You you think people, I mean, do you think you should change that? How or? can I change that? I'm not changing nothing. I think it's it's one of those things. If Pickers. you know, <laughs> if you know it's a live stream, which most of the time people indicate that on the title of their stuff, then you should expect that, right? Roger that. That's what I think. Roger, Roger. Sent you a Facebook message with an oil interest. Uh oh, mm. Facebook message. Like you sent it as a message. Bob. Bob, 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 Bob. Wingswept like Homestead. See, <laughs> See how I switched that up? See how I switched that up? Alright, B Lady, don't even I'm start. Here. Don't. Chasing tots to change and put in bed. Don't start without me. <laughs> hey, Teresa. What's up? Jaton, I haven't gotten it yet. So. Wholesome roots. Hey, be lady. What? No, don't talk to be lady. Why? Because I she love talking to be lady. She came in and she said, "Hey, Robin." That was all she said. When? Just now? Uh huh. Oh, well, she said, See, "Hi, right there. everyone." Hi, Robin. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. This is my house. She does that on purpose. Shouldn't have done that. for sharing that, Jaton. Although I kind of knew a good bit of that already. Not that particular oil, but... Dutch! But, um, there is a Facebook group No, it's not. That, um, if you're ever interested in purity of oils... Purity of oils. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. There's the one that messes up everything for everybody. <laughs> Let the games begin. Messes right, up the grading curve. Um, da, 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 da. Where's my group? Livy always says, hey, Robin, too. Oh. Hey, Livy. Hey, Livy. Okay, Farmer Mimo is here. And that's a blessing because Farmer Mimo is not feeling good. I know it. Sherry, cherry. Sherry. I didn't guess today. I'm sorry. Who didn't guess today? Mama. Yeah, Mama Cat. She didn't. That's right. Mimo. Maybe it's a page. Mimo. Is there a Mimo. difference between a page? Oh, it's a page, Mimo. guys. I am so Facebook illiterate. So how many people won today? I'm funny. Nobody got it. Nobody. Nobody got it. I don't know how else to get a hold of you guys. I made the soap pods, changed a little by adding a Fells Naphtha as well, and I'll actually try them tomorrow, just letting you know. All right, Christine! We've used... Well, we don't use Fells Naphtha, we use the Zote soap instead, so... Oh, Susan. Susan's allowed to joke, but you can't joke with Susan. What did Susan say? Oh, shut up. <laughs> I love you, Susan. You know what? Christy gets one of the free samples tonight, since Please nobody wants... 
writing these down. Okay. Christy, what I need you to do is contact us at BigBearFarms at Hotmail.com. Cause she, you're new, you're new. We appreciate you coming. But the plain fact that you're trying our laundry pods recipe, and and you are going to keep us abreast with the changes that you're making. Okay, mm. this is what it's called. It's called Essential Oil Consumer Reports. And if you go, it's a closed group, so you kind of have to ask to. Um, me to join, too, Hope. But they have a document section that has a bunch of the reports that have been done on purity tests. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, that's if you're interested in that, that's one of the pages that I have. And I really am not active in discussion on there because they have their moderators have all kinds of rules about everything. So, I basically joined the page just to be able to have access to the reports so so Christy if Kitty or one of my wrenches could put our website up there for us if you could please contact us there and give us your address you will get um, a free sample of tonight's essential oil. well that's cool um, I'm a cat's mom her white cell count is down which means that that's lowering the infection that's good um, that red thing set me back. It was a tub. Hoss uh, is in the house and he's hungry. What's up, Side hungry. Buster? We haven't talked about that yet. Side Buster? Oh, so, well, yeah, I haven't mentioned it yet. Yeah. Yep, 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 the very first clue was was let's see it was a picture of an aproxen sodium bottle so basically the generic version of a leaf the generic version of a leaf mm -hmm. it was mm. a picture of a generic bottle of a leaf hey james hey james All okay. right. Now, the next picture was a picture from our trip in Helen. It was a picture of the bathtub that was in the room. Oh. Just the bathtub. Not us in the bathtub, just the bathtub. <laughs> I guess arsenic, since Jason wasn't allowed to taste test it. You were so wrong. Yeah, it's an inset. Yeah. No, Lush, we didn't get your address. No, did yeah, I did not get it. Um, no, not elderberry. No, it's not elderberry. Okay. And then the final clue was a picture of me. No. My big toe. No. The Boston Tea Party. Boston Tea Party. Mm hmm. Hmm. So a dirty old bathtub. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was pretty clean. The dirtier that we got out of it. <laughs> if it was arsenic, the way he acts someday, she would have let him try it. Slippery Elmer will it know. Did anyone see Deep Blue Willow Bark from that red thing? <laughs> Did you really think that? No. You know what? It was a so. Farmer Meemaw gets the other one because she's in pain and this does help with pain, right? A little bit with muscles. Well, I mean, it's a, it's an it's, it's in deep blue. equivalent to the mm -hmm. end. Okay, so it's not deep blue, but you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Jason needs a bath. <laughs> so Meemaw, we need your, your address also. I have it somewhere, but if you would just, yeah, my brain hurts. <laughs> Clove, nope, not clove. Nope. I wouldn't say it's a common oil, but 
not it's peppermint. Used, I mean, it's used a lot, so in a lot of things. Prissy green. Not hey. rosemary. <laughs> Not no, rosemary. No, nobody got it. So the third sample I'm gonna give out is to Nicole from Simply Seven. So we got Christy. From where? That's just her channel name is Christy. No. Oh. What? Yeah, her name. We got Christy, and then we got Mima. And Nick and Shark Bait. Okay, so we had a couple of people guess it. So wholesome course, Roots, guys. Of Susan and Wholesome Roots and Vina. Okay, so it's wintergreen. Wintergreen is the number one essential oil ingredient in the massage blend that we use religiously here at our house. Mm -hmm. um, it is Can we give one to Wholesome Roots? Fantastic. Too? Yes, it is in deep blue. It is the first. If you look at the ingredients in the lick in the um, lotion, which is what we use a lot, the first ingredient is aqua, <laughs> which is water, and the second ingredient is um, wintergreen essential oil. So um, I was gonna say wintergreen. Darn it! <laughs> so acid, incense, and some sort of wintergreen mint. <laughs> okay. So, let's talk about, See, I don't have an actual channel. Okay, well, Christy, that's fine. Just, um, all you have to do is just email us, and we'll give you, which is crazy, because she's in Utah. It's really close to where mm -hmm. um, the company that we uh, distribute for. Wholesome Roots, send us of. your address, too. Did you write that one out? Writing it right now. I was reading the bottle. That's why I was asking if it was in it. Yep, that's it. How does it fit in with the Boston Tea Party? Okay, well, we're going to, I'm going to tell you. That's a good you, question because I've been waiting to hear I'm that I'm going to tell you. I will tell you. But you have to be patient, okay? Because it's not right in the beginning of all my notes. It's towards the middle. And Sherry's right, too. What's the tub got to do with it? Because isn't this a hot oil? No. Kind of? No. Because I thought I put wintergreen in the tub one time mm -hmm. and it burnt my bee, my boys. If you can eat it, why is Jason, isn't Jason eating it? You cannot eat the oil. Ooh, another thing we're going to learn in our class. What? Okay. So, what? What? Nothing. Okay. Thanks, you guys, but you can send my sample to someone who guessed it. Okay, then I'll send yours to Wholesome Roots. Okay. All right. So, how is it used? Only aromatic and topically. Preferably topically before aromatic. Okay. This one you really have to pay attention to because if you used it internally, the amount, because of how concentrated it is, you, it, it's, it can be toxic is basically what, what I'm trying to say. And what's interesting is that the leaves of the, of the tree, um, you can eat the leaves that are on the, the shrub or tree or whatever, but you can't eat the oil. And the reason why is because of how it's, it's transformed from the leaves into the essential oil. And remember that essential oils are the concentrated version of the plant, right? It's taking the essence of the plant and it's putting it into very small, I mean, you know, think about how potent some of these oils can be. And this is one of them. Christy, no, we're, we're with doTERRA. Um, don't understand that. I promise you guys, I'm going to get to the Boston Tea Party. I promise. Okay. So as far as warnings and contraindications, again, please pay attention. Do not use with children. Okay. Hold on. Beep. Deed, deed, warning. Deed. Public service announcement. <laughs> deed, deed, deed. Now, most of the books that I read say. No, this is where you're supposed to say don't use in children. Don't. Okay, that's what I'm getting ready to say. Most of the most of the books I say don't use in children under two. I would say about five. Um, and even then, 
moderate to heavy dilution. So put it in lotion, put it in sweet pea. Um, I'll <laughs> put it in an oil, whether it be fractionated coconut oil, regular coconut oil, um, baby oil, whatever. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you dilute this if you're going to use it with children. Um, and there are some applications to use for children, so if you're going to use it, just make sure that you dilute it properly. Um, okay, if you're pregnant, do not use this oil um, because it is an amenagogue, which means that it will bring on your menstrual cycle. So you want to make sure that you do not use this while you're pregnant. What? An amenagog? Amenagog, that's the word. Yeah. Amenagog. Uh-huh. Gog, gog, gog. Uh-huh. Gog, 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 gog. Yes, so it's an amenagog. Okay, so you want to make sure that if you're pregnant, not using this. Now, I did see some research that said that it was okay to use once in labor to help with labor pains. But again, I would err on the side of caution with this one. I don't think I would use it. I think I would just leave it alone. So, oh, no. Okay, also, if you take Coumadin or Warfarin, um, don't use this oil. And the reason why is because this oil has the property to be able to slow blood clotting. Okay, so like I've said before, if the oil has the property to do it and a medicine has the property to do it, don't take them both at the same time. Okay, one or the other. So if you're on Coumadin, you don't, you don't want to be on this. Um, or you want to, you know, figure out where your levels are that, you know, you don't want to make sure that you OD on, you know, the same property, basically. Um, the other thing is, because um, what, it, what it will do is it'll also increase your chances of bruising or bleeding. So you don't want, you know, if you're already taking, because it's a blood thinner. Uh, Coumadin's a, a blood thinner. So you don't want to take something that's going to thin your blood even more and make it easier for you to bruise or bleed. So how does wintergreen thin your blood? Hmm? Just the same way. It has the same but properties because it. it has, right. Okay, so you don't have to take it internally. Wintergreen is so potent that you can put it on your skin and it will go into your skin and straight into the muscles and tissue. So, which will then in turn go into your bloodstream. So, that's why you really don't want to ingest this because imagine if it'll go right through your skin into everything, you really don't want to, you know. So, I shouldn't take it when I'm on my cycle? Right. Not while you're on your cycle. Yes, you can take it while you're on your cycle because it's also a pain reliever. So it would work with that. So cramping, it's antispasmodic, so it'll help with cramps and things like that as well. Um, yeah, when you're nursing, it would, that, yeah. Okay, so they're helping with that in the chat. Um, okay, also, wintergreen can interact with aspirin. So if you use aspirin, don't use wintergreen at the same time. Okay, you want to be real careful with that. Um, and because what will happen is it will increase your chances of having the side effects that come along with aspirin. You know, there's so you side wanna, effects to aspirin? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's side effects to anything that's been engineered. I know there's side effects to marriage. Um, <laughs> uh, and the other thing, too, is it can lower blood pressure. So be very, very careful with this. If you already have low blood pressure, you want to make sure that you are taking precautions to make sure that you're watching your blood pressure and you don't want to use a whole lot of this. What? Nothing. Okay. Um, also, never apply to open wounds. Again, because of how... Um, because of how um, potent this is, you don't want to introduce it straight into the bloodstream, okay? So no open wounds, all right? Okay, so now that we got all that out of the way, um, 
what is it and how is it made? Okay, first of all. I have a question. Uh huh. You said we can't ingest this. Mm -hmm. Then how come there's wintergreen cigarettes, wintergreen chewing tobacco, wintergreen dip, wintergreen chips? I would imagine that they use like, you know how we talk about toothpick? Mm -hmm. They probably use, and it, and it might even be synthetic, I don't know. Um, but I would imagine... Uh -huh. Because the thing is, is normally when people ingest oils, they ingest the, either the oil by itself. Like if you, if you took a full drop and put that directly into your system, that would be a lot, like a whole lot. But if you imagine somebody making a huge thing of, you know, wintergreen toothpaste or wintergreen mouthwash, you know, they may put one drop in for an entire vat. You know, you think of how potent Cause, some cause, of these are. Because Skull Wintergreen used mm -hmm. to be my favorite. Dish. Well, and that was the thing. is like that they're used for so many different things as far as flavoring goes. And, and I did. I scratched my head on that because I'm like, you know, if you're not supposed to ingest it. And the reason why, I think, is because... And, and there are some things that say um, that you can use it under supervision kind of thing but the the problem is is that people don't use it under supervision they think they know everything and so then they end up and i don't remember um i don't remember the exact amount but like one fluid ounce so like one of these bottles i think is is a fluid ounce and if you took this entire bottle, it's like an astronomical amount of aspirin. Like, it's crazy. So, you don't want to take, like, a lot over time because it, it just is it's bad for you. So, um, is cumin or... I said coumadin. That's a, um, the generic version of orphan, which is a blood thinner. Wintergreen, breastfeeding... I, you know, I didn't look in breastfeeding. You know, when I was breastfeeding, I didn't really take anything. And yes, wintergreen can lower blood pressure. It is good for hypertension. I was so afraid that I was going to pass it on to the baby. Let me, um, just real I quick. I drank a lot of water. Let me look. A lot of, ate a lot of organic breast food. breastfeeding. Because I'm pretty sure it does not recommend using breast, during breastfeeding. Um. <laughs> Definitely not during pregnancy, and I don't remember taking anything when I was breastfeeding, honey. So yeah, you don't. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you you just pluck the hairs around my nipples, so <laughs> that way the baby wasn't eating and flossing at the same time. <laughs> okay. I do not see it as a suggestion for any of the things that happen during breastfeeding. So if I, I would just stay away from it. I think there are other things. If you're looking for a certain thing, like to increase milk production, I think we had said, was it fennel? Mm -hmm. Was one of them that helps with that. Yeah, yeah but it makes them so sore. So. <laughs> All that pressure. I'm not even going to. I'm just done. Okay. And you aren't even nice enough to milk me when the so baby's hungry. So this oil the one that we have is Wiltheria fragrantissima okay now there's another one that's also used now this is what's kind of funny about this um is that how your chest develops <laughs> um so the thing about this is it's called wintergreen right but wintergreen is actually just a generic term it was the term used before we came up with the term evergreen. Because winter green literally meant that it, it was, was a green, plant that stayed the... green during the winter time. Okay? So, <laughs> here you boss. I got really sore when I was pregnant. See, Hoss feels my pain. <laughs> okay. You know, and then when you when you had to pump, mm -hmm. and it was like, ding, 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 ding. That made... You know, and then you had to put the other butter on you too because of the chapping and cracking and... You've been talking to Daisy, huh? <laughs> you were like, no support whatsoever. No support whatsoever, yep. And there were times I was laying there just miserable. Yeah. Anyway, 
Okay, so it's also known as Eastern Teaberry and Checkerberry. Um, wintergreen, like I said, was originally referred to any plant or tree that stayed green in the winter. Now it's more commonly called evergreen. Um, wintergreen is either a shrub or a tree that grows. It has red mm. berries. Um, the mm. leaves are tasteless. May I interrupt you for a minute? Bandana Grandma said, just joins. Missed what you said about the blood thinner and wintergreen. Docs want me to take, take blood, blood thinner, thinner to, to avoid, avoid a stroke. stroke because of arterial fibrillation. I don't want Coumadin. Okay, so this would, and it's like I said, Coumadin and wintergreen have the same properties. Okay, wintergreen is actually almost completely methyl sal salicylate, I think is the name. Um, let me... I've got it written down. So Salicylate. She, so, yeah. so bandana could use this instead of. Well, I would never tell somebody to use that. But she in could try place, it. But maybe for support to see if it would help. Um, you could definitely try it. If they're already suggesting that that's something you need, you could try it and see if it affects your. Um, because it's also good for blood pressure and stuff. So it would help with all of that as well. Okay, bandana. I'm curious. I want to see if it helps you so if you could please send us your address and i'm gonna send you a sample but with the stipulation you have to let us know that you have to try it and then you have to let us know if it worked for you or not now she said she came in late so i'm expecting you to go back and watch the beginning where i talk about all of the warnings so and just make sure you use it use it be careful with it um okay so the the leaves are actually tasteless and odorless they don't have any taste to them they don't smell like wintergreen what actually happens is now here's the thing she's saying she's taking aspirin you can't do both so you got to be careful with that mm -hmm. um okay so they're odorless and tasteless but what happens is when they're and this is the fancy word enzymatically hydrolyzed which is fancy for the process of what happens during steam distillation um, the minty aroma develops in that process so it doesn't actually have the smell or the the taste or whatever you want to call it until it's actually distilled it brings out the minty aroma after it's been chemically changed through the the steam distillation um, it's this plant or tree shrub whatever is um, the uh it's native to north america so a lot of its history um is i've jeton i've used balance and wintergreen together before so and i've never had any issues so i don't imagine it would be a problem but again wintergreen is not one of those ones you want to use all the time this is one of those oils that we swap up with like ginger and cedar wood and a bunch of others for his neuralgia like we we swap them out so that it keeps his body guessing of what we're using so this would be something i would suggest that would be one of your oils and as a matter of fact wintergreen kind of came into play when i was writing my book and I, that's i'm gonna leave it at that but um there's definitely um you know something to say about wintergreen being something that you can use in your rotation um it stays in hours um and this real quick so check out my nifty little this is my little oil bag that i made where is it there we go i always mess that up so this is it's in half like that and then i can fold it this way or i can fold it this way and it has little sleeves which way do i fit it that way no this way because i've got it folded <laughs> so the little sleeves there's bottles down in the holes so and then i can just fold that up like a travel case and put it in our bag when we take it you know and even we can take it in the car or put it in the car or whatever so um all right so sidebuster says is winter green better topically or diffusing topically topically definitely topically diffusing is just kind of a last like like literally this is really good for respiratory but it's actually more effective if you actually put it on the chest as opposed to just diffusing it 
Um, aromatic is secondary use. Topical is the first choice of use. Um, okay, so let's talk about the history. Here we go. This is, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, this is where we start talking about, oh my, well, one of my clues. <laughs> We, right. we can make you a bag like that for four easy payments of $29.95. Gabapentin. Um, neuralgia's flaring up. Yes, neuralgia. Look, this one has helped Jason with his neuralgia. Um, and I'll tell you all about, because there's properties that this has that are very similar to the things that you use for neuralgia. So we'll just, we'll go to that. That bag is going to be on our website before the end of the week. So. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I just kind of whipped it up because my problem was every time we would go travel somewhere, and especially like even going to Hope's because we would have situations where I knew we were going to need certain oils. Whether I'm we not were... going to Hope's no more. <laughs> um, and so we're talking about wintergreen ginger rose. Um, so Smoking reptile. I used to just put them all in a Ziploc bag, but I got nervous that the glass bottles would bang up against each other. Because, I mean, they when they start to go in, I mean, that makes me nervous just hearing that noise. So, what I did was there's actually padding um, in between the layers. Because it's two layers of fabric, but there's padding in between it. And then they have separate holes for each one to slide in so that they don't knock into each other. So that was the purpose of that was because the way that I was carrying them, I was afraid that I was eventually going to have one just break on me, and I didn't want that. Um, okay, so as far as history goes, this um, was used a lot by Native Americans. Um, tribes that were Native in North America used it to help with fatigue, lung, sinus, respiratory infections, um, there are also records that show that they used it um, to increase stamina and alertness and endurance. Um, they used the leaves to, they would chew, chew the leaves for stamina. Um, and then they would also um, use the berries, they used the berries medicinally, but then they would also... Um, <laughs> Um, they would also use the leaves um, and brewed as a tea to help relieve headaches, fevers, sore throat, aches, and pains. Now, here's where... Ava, yes, she did make that. Um, uh, sort of looked like that, yeah. Don't forget to write a pattern. Yeah, I guess I do need to write a pattern. <laughs> um, okay, so... The thing with the Boston Tea Party. Here's, this is where we're at. Here we go. Here's the thing. Um, during the American Revolution, wintergreen leaves were used as a substitute to make tea because tea was very scarce. Why? That was a cheese ball <laughs> clue. <laughs> That was a cheese ball. Clue. Now again, now how? What the crap? The leaves. The leaves you. Well, where do they get the oil from? What do you mean? Where did they get the oil from? How do they get the oil? They how steam they... distill it. Did you from... not listen to what I said? Yeah. That... It's the chemical change that happens when it's steam distilled that changes it and actually extracts methyl salicylate, which is very very potent but when you're putting the leaves in the hot water to make the tea isn't that the same thing no why not because it's not because there's no steam because it's not because the steam distillation when they do that distillation when they do that they're extracting the oil not the water and the oil just the oil that's coming off the top that's it so the oil is like exponentially stronger than the leaf. Yeah, I think that's a bunch of crap. Just saying. Um, Jason, they've made oils more <laughs> millions of years, for millions of years, yeah. I mean, the the thing is, is that you've got to think of it like, I'm trying to they think. They've been making oils for millions of years. Okay, so, yeah. So, okay, so think of it like, All right, here's a good example. Okay. When we use peppermint leaves, uh -huh. or your mint leaves, uh -huh. in your water, uh -huh. 
it takes quite a few leaves and we have to rub them together uh -huh. and it gives a little bit of the oil and it just barely flavors your water it flavors your water but not like how many drops of peppermint would it take or maybe the better question is how many leaves of peppermint would it take to equal one drop of the oil that's that, now yeah, do you that, get it you're, you're splitting hairs <laughs> no i'm not you're that's the difference <laughs> yes you kicked us out so no tea for you <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, who won that war? <laughs> Just checking. <sighs> Look at always, she's so smart. It's like distilling wood into alcohol. You don't drink the wood. <laughs> What's I talking to you, Mom? <laughs> Teresa, Sam, we have coffee. <laughs> okay, so let's... What's up, John Stanley? How you been? Let's talk properties because this is where it really gets interesting um as far as property goes obviously it's an analgesic for pain um anodyne which means it can eliminate pain and induce relaxation so not only does it help um the like if you if you're trying to help with muscle pain not only will it help with the muscle pain but it will relax you as it's helping the the muscle pain I still have muscle pain in my shoulder. Maybe you should put it on there. No, because I already put some on there. Um, it's anaromatic and antiarthritic, antispasmodic, antiseptic. Uh, okay, so the bath, I'll get to that in a second. Um, antiseptic and um, astringent, carminative, meaning that can help with gas, diuretic, meaning it can help you pee, amenagogue, we already covered that one, and stimulant, okay? So, as far as the body systems go, um, for the brain, this kind of, it, it's anti-inflammatory, so it'll help with, like, you know, headaches and things like that. Um, will it help with getting overheated? No. Definitely not, because this will actually warm you up, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so... It has been used with people who've had stroke, um, have had a stroke, um, and, and again, part of that is because it's helping to get the blood flowing, um, and, and, and again, it's an anti-inflammatory. What? Nothing. Um, if it helps with gas, we, you know, we've gone through so many of these that have, um, um, that are committed at carminative property. So Jason, like, he's always getting treated with something that's carminative. <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> Actually, what it makes me wonder is... Hi, is Rocky it, Brook Farm. So. Is it working and are we just not getting it as often? <laughs> that's my question. I get no respect. Yeah, I know. We love you, honey. Okay, so as far as the cardiovascular um, system, this is where this one has, um, you know, a good bit of uh, the properties are a lot more useful in this system. Um, it helps with blood clots, helps with high blood pressure, helps with poor circulation. Um, it also helps with um, systemic warming so if you're cold and you need to be warmed up this helps with that like extremities that are cold because of poor circulation this will help with that as well um, it can help with fainting or near fainting obviously because of the smell um, it can help with clogged arteries as well um, as far as the digestive system like I said it's a carminative so it helps relieve gas um, it's also a diuretic, so it will help um, with cleaning out the digestive tract. It's also good for nausea because, again, it has that minty kind of smell, um, so it would help with nausea. You can apply it directly to your stomach if you have upset stomach, um, or you can just um, smell. But, again, topically versus... Um, but where is Clary Sage? Yeah, where is Clary Sage? <laughs> okay. Um, also, in the digestive area, um, this is good for gallstones and also gastric ulcers. 
again, not to eat. Um, it's to um, apply directly onto the um, onto your abdomen. Um, suburban ass. So I have poor circulation and low blood pressure. Oh dear, that's kind of crazy. Um, the thing with that suburban, there's other oils that are good for um, circulation as well. But again, you just have to be careful. If you're watching your blood pressure and just kind of keep up with it, that can, you know, we can, if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that later and figure that out. Um, okay. Keep All right. Um, as far as the immune system, this is another one, um, that because it's an anti-inflammatory, it helps to reduce pain, congestion, and swelling. So it's a good, um, application for, um, cold and flu season. So that, you know, works out well, um, to be able to use for cold and flu symptoms. Um, it's also good for rheumatic fever, gout, um, and especially with allergies. And again, because of it being an anti-inflammatory, it helps with like narrow and constricted airways, um, large and swollen glands, and also wheezing and coughing. Um, oh, Laura, my God. <laughs> oh. All right, let's see. Um, and like I said before, this one is more effective as a, um, I got a four. <laughs> Laura she's killing me. Um, it'll seep through the skin and it's absorbed into the muscles and the tissue. So that's how it's as effective as it is. Um, now, as far as the skin, Kitty said earlier that this is used in a lot of facials and stuff. And the reason why um, is because it's astringent and antiseptic. So it helps with um, killing bacteria that might, you know, cause acne, things like that. Um, those are the kinds of things, you know, you, this oil is really helpful for anything having to do with the integumentary system anyway. So let's talk about that for a second. First of all, with your hair, it's good for um, dandruff, dry hair, fragile hair, loss of hair, itchy and flaky scalp. Um, this helps with, you know, you can just add just a couple of drops um, to your shampoo and then massage into your scalp works really well. Pretty much Rocky Brook. That's all that. <laughs> and do that occasionally. <laughs> um, the other thing is with the skin, like I said, it'll help with, um, it helps with acne, again, because it's astringent and antiseptic. Um, it also helps with eczema, psoriasis, and even dermatitis. Um, let's see. As far as mood and behavior, this um, oil is good for anxiety, impatience, frustration, um, being oversensitive or defensive, um, being selfish, stubborn, things like that. So it also helps a little bit with... Selfish. I know a guy like that. I know, right? <laughs> anyway. No, Sam, let, let Brad be. Let Brad be coming in as, as Alpha Wolf. <laughs> The only thing that he's alpha of is alpha apple, apple juice. <laughs> okay, so next thing, muscular <clears throat> system. Now, here it is. This oil is fantastic for the muscular system and the skeletal system. Um, it helps <sighs> with any kind of like tendonitis, um, cramping, charley horses, fibromyalgia, um, it helps with inflammation, whether it's chronic or acute, pain, whether it's chronic or acute, helps with muscle development, numbness, 
um, sprains, strains, any kind of um, tendon issues. Um, I'm sorry. Also with tissue issues. So like if you have, um, do they sell it in a vat? I know, right? Um, they also have it where um, it works really good um, with swollen or red tissue. So New Mexico is, nurse, you're new. We're talking about wintergreen. Talking about wintergreen. Wintergreen. Yes. Okay. Um, now, um, the reason why this is as useful as it is is because wintergreen is one of the best sources of methyl salicylate, um, which is an inf an inflammation fighting co fighting compound. Okay. Um, it's believed to be, wintergreen's believed to be one of the few um, plants that naturally supplies enough to form an extract to be able to actually get the, um, to be able to get the oil out of, to be able to use as an essential oil. Um, the, the numbing agent that works um, for this, the whole reason why this oil works as well as it is is because its properties are similar to cortisone so um it has the same kind of properties as what cort the the same effect that cortisone has so if you you know that's one of the things that um this that's the reason why we use it for his neuralgia because <laughs> he he used to take cortisone shots in his back and you didn't like the way they made you feel, right? Mm -hmm. Or any no, of the. I didn't mind the way that made me feel. Y'all didn't like <laughs> no, the way they made me feel. No, it wasn't the. No, <laughs> that was not the cortisone. That was the numbing agent that would make, <laughs> that would make you feel. <laughs> um, let's see. So anyway, the um. So that's where the NSAID thing comes in. Um. <sighs> That was, that was that. So, See you later, Wholesome Roots. Okay. Um, so then, let's see. This info is being given free. It's expensive otherwise. You're welcome, Case. The Case family. That's pretty nice of y'all. Um, all right. So, um, let's go on to, again, with the nervous system. Same kind of thing. Um, nerve inflammation, neuralgia, any kind of numbing or prickling pain. So this would have been nice for Carol when she, what would she call it? Pins and noodles. Pins and noodles. Not, Not pins, pins and, and needles, noodles, but pins and noodles. <laughs> OMG, no free speech. Well, you know. <laughs> we don't care. Nobody's telling. I mean, if if you wouldn't have cowered out of boot camp. <laughs> stop. You might stop, you might have been able to talk okay, more about free speech. Okay, can we do this to where I don't need to worry about that? Because mm -hmm. the thing is. That's not going to be published later. This is. So leave it alone. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Here's all right. Something. So here's the thing. Um, okay. So let's talk about the respiratory system. Um, because we use them, Brad. Okay. The, um, the thing is that... Um, as far as the respiratory system, like I said, because we we know that this is an anti-inflammatory, it helps with things like, like I said before, with allergies. It helps with constricted airways. It helps with shortness of breath. It helps with um, wheezing, heavy mucus when you're coughing. What was it that winter, that winter bass calls it? Lung butter? Lung butter. <laughs> um... And it helps with any kind of lung problems. It also helps with asthma because of the anti-inflammatory properties. It, you know, it helps with that as well. So this is one, again, also make sure that I would put this um, on your chest that would go straight into the tissue and it would also, you would smell it. Trust me when I tell you, you will smell it. Mm -hmm. So it would be both. You'll, um, you'll smell it, but it also go into the skin as well. Um, all right. As far as the skeletal system goes, um, this helps with a lot of different things. Joint pain, 
lower back pain somebody asked about sciatica um you know this helps with that uh helps with ligament pains um inflamed or deteriorating discs so this is another one um that would help with the stuff that jason has going on we have used before in his lower back um it helps with joint clicking, locking pain, rheumatoid arthritis. It also helps with rotator cuff um, issues, frozen shoulders, shin splints, limited range of motion, bone spurs, basically anything skeletal or muscular, this oil is, is a good application for. Um, and then finally, the urinary system. Um, this helps with all kinds of urinary disorders, whether it be a bladder infection, kidney stones, anything like that. Because it's a diuretic, um, it helps with that as well. Okay, yes, with the cortisone effect, do diabetics need to worry about sugars going up? Okay, I did not see anywhere in any of my um, research mentioning anything about blood sugar. I didn't see where it would lower blood sugar or raise blood sugar. Didn't see that. Um, and the thing might be that because this is not actually cortisone, that it may be a good alternative to cortisone. Um, yes, we're still talking about wintergreen. Love wintergreen, the peppermint, but hate spearmint. See, I'm the same way. I don't. I am not crazy about the smell of spearmint. I don't mind the plant. But I can only imagine what it would be like if I had to smell it concentrated. Like I, I don't, I do not own spearmint oil. How would it help with bone with bone spurs? spurs? Just with the pain, um, you would you would apply it directly to the area where the bone spur is. Um, this is also good for edema for water retention because it's a diuretic. It's going to help to flush the system. So that's another thing. Um, also, okay, so good question, Sam. Can I rub it all over then because I have pain all over? Be careful. What I would do, if you're going to do that, what I would do is I would put it in a carrier oil. I would take a regular oil, um, like fractionated coconut oil, put it in there. But Kitty's got the better suggestion, and I don't, and I'm going to say this. I'm not a fan of the blend, the oil blend, as much as I am of the lotion. They actually have a lotion that does much better, in my opinion. Um, it spreads out better. It just because the thing is with the with the massage blend, it's it's already going to be a little bit diluted. And the thing is, is that with the lotion, it's so. I mean, you you can feel it for quite a while afterwards it has that it's kind of like icy hot and so it definitely like when I put it on Jason's shoulders right before we came out here it was still kind of chilly on my arms for the first maybe 10 minutes of the show um, and now I'm into the warm part of it my arms are nice and warm right now which would be okay if it wasn't 90 degrees outside um, <laughs> okay so, as far as other uses, just random uses that this oil is good for, and there's some really interesting thoughts here. Um, one, you can put it in your laundry or your um, dishwasher soap. And let me hold off on that for a second. Lorelai asked, ultra-sensitive skin, capsaicin burns the skin. How is wintergreen for sensitivity? It's, it's okay but I would dilute it. If he already has sensitive skin, I would just dilute it, um, would be my recommendation. Rocky Brook, you're at 199 subs. Somebody go sub him real quick. Y'all go sub, open up another tab and sub Rocky Brook Farmstead. Yeah, you can dilute it in an oil or a lotion. Let's get that <laughs> man over 200. Okay. Um, so... What you can do is you can put it in laundry or dishwasher soap. And the reason why is because it will kill the odor-causing bacteria and molds that are in um, your different, you know, all the different things that um, show up. What are you doing? Okay. Um, also, and this was a funny one. Okay. So, 
one of the suggestions was to put it in your toilet bowl cleaner, like to do it in your toilet bowl. And that made me think of something. Um, you can put it in any lotion, be lady. Um, preferably one that doesn't have a smell, but it doesn't matter. I, I mean, a lot of these, um, a lot of these end up overwhelming the smell of the of the lotion that you put because it's so concentrated. A lot of times that you know, it awesome takes over. guys. Thanks. Um, okay, so toilet bowl. Back to the toilet bowl. Um, because it is antiseptic. Um, it helps kill bacteria and stuff, so it's good to put Night John. as a toilet bowl cleaner, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it got me thinking. I was like, I knew I remembered that smell from somewhere. We have Lysol toilet bowl cleaner. And so when Jason, we were getting ready for the show, I said, close your eyes. I want you to smell something. And so I took the toilet bowl cleaner without him knowing, and I sprayed it. Not sprayed it, but I just kind of squeezed the bottle a little bit so that he could just smell it. He didn't, like, nothing got on him or anything like that. So he smelled it. I said, okay, you got that smell? He said, yeah. So then I took the wintergreen, and I opened up the bottle and smelled it. I said, do they smell similar? And he said, yes. See, I am convinced that the wintergreen smells so much like the Lysol that methyl salicylate might be in that cleaner. I was just curious. I didn't, I looked, I didn't see it, but you know how those cleaners are? They have like 0.1% of, or 0.01% is the mm -hmm. active ingredient, and then they don't tell you what the inactive, inactive ingredients are. Two but, family, are you going live soon? Um, anyway, okay. Um, another thing, you can inhale it before or after a workout, before the workout to help with stamina, uh, stamina. You can apply to your chest, neck, wrist to help with any kind of fatigue, anything like that. Um, now, with the bathtub, if you mix lavender and wintergreen and some Epsom salts and put it in a bathtub, it is a fantastic muscle relaxing soak. We've used this before. Um, but see, Susan, it doesn't smell like normal Lysol. It's the, it's the toilet bowl cleaner that has the little, you know, the... The bottle is shaped differently, but that's the one that um, it is. Okay, let me wrap up real quick so that Two Family can go on. Um, you can use this, again, if you wanted to, in homemade toothpaste, but you wouldn't use a whole lot. And again, you would not want to swallow. You'd want to spit that out. Same thing with mouthwash. Same thing. Um, it's frequently used for snake bites, dog bites, stings from poisonous insects such as scorpions, wasps, and bees. So again, it's something like that that we need to keep up with if we have any bee stings to try that and see how that works. It also helps with frostbite. Um, again, because it's warming and it'll help with water, I mean with the, the blood flow to help get, you know, the heat going back to the rest of the body. Um... It's been used in flavoring for gum, mint, candy, dip, snuff, all of that stuff. So like you were saying, mm -hmm. the wintergreen. Um, it's also been used before as a component in root beer. Really? Yes. Um, and finally, this is the one that I thought was the most interesting. It has been used in fine printing applications to transfer color photocopy images or laser print to what they call a high rag content paper. So you can literally take the oil, put it on the image, and put it onto another piece of paper or a special type of paper. And then you do kind of like etching where you, you know, you kind of um, go over the back side of the paper and it helps to transfer the image onto another piece of paper. So that I thought was really, really, really cool. So wintergreen, definitely one of those, um, it, it's not extremely expensive, um, and it has so many uses, especially if um, you have skeletal, muscular, nerve, any kind of issues like that, and definitely um, circulatory issues as well. So Okay, Christy, Nicole, Wholesome Roots, and Bandana, make sure we get your address, please. I already got Christie's. I see Christie's in here. Okay. <laughs> and just send them to the email. Kitty, if you could put that email up for us one last time. And, uh, okay, guys. I guess we're going to call it a night. Two family will be going on in a minute. And, uh, 
don't forget uh, our morning chats in the morning somewhere between 10 and 10 30 i jump on real quick um, before we go clara sage wants to know what's your favorite oil mm, yeah i know i read that i like cassia that's one of my favorites no see she was she was fishing I know. She wants us to say Clary Sage. That's your favorite. Mm -hmm. Jason, when you sign up, don't cut, don't cut the last words. Don't cut the, I try. I try. <laughs> so we'll be quiet. And then you no. can turn it off. So thank you guys for coming in. Don't forget, you've got my, my morning water break in the mornings. My um, in the garden with me on Wednesdays. Wednesday. And don't forget, we got a very special show, and I don't know how often this one's going to happen, um, but this Thursday, yes, cases, I still want to talk. This Thursday, we've got Brian from Brighton Entertainment coming on to talk production, to stuff. Talk production stuff. Yep. So, um, what did you want us to remember this morning? I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Hold on, Casey. Okay, Kitty might have sent it. Sent me something. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. All right, guys. Y'all have a good one. Head on over to Two Family. Two Family if you want. Remember, and... be nice to one another and help us take care of this planet. We've only got one. Thank you, guys. We night, will see you in the morning. Bye. Bye.